Ahoy Captains, it's Vaz again with another video from World of Warships Legends. And today we have a Kleber video for you. And this is a game of domination on the map Crash Zone, as you can see uh, at the beginning there. Now I just put out a post-nerf Kleber Kraken video. And I was going through my archive looking for my next uh, possible video. And I came across this one and I thought, hey, that makes total sense to do a pre-nerf Kleber Kraken. In fact... Let's take her up a notch, and let's make it a six-pack. We are playing the pre-nerf Kleber after all. And boy, this thing, it used to be a, a straight-up Kraken printer. I still think it's a good ship. And uh, for my thoughts on it, check out my post-nerf Kleber Kraken video. Boy, that was hard to say. I had to redo that a couple of times. But yeah, the card's up top there, and uh, I'll leave a link in the description below. And hell, we're playing the Kleber in this match, so we're going to talk all about it uh, anyways. Yeah, as for this match, it's actually a pretty interesting one. We have uh, four destroyers per side, and uh, there are two radar cruisers on the enemy team, and uh, most of the ships are legendaries. In fact, all eight destroyers are legendary destroyers. We have five freaking Shimikazes in this match, Jesus. But all those torp boats actually uh, benefit us. If we run into a Shimikaze, we'll be able to outgun him, no problem. We do have the second largest guns for a destroyer in the game. And for having those large guns, their reload time on this thing is actually pretty good. Now we've gotten the easternmost portion uh, spawn. And when it comes to the spawn, it's uh, you're pretty much in the open water at the beginning. Unless you have a really quick boat, maybe you can take cover behind uh, the islands uh, towards the northeast. But then you're kind of out of position, really. So anyways, as a destroyer, I just like to go right up to the middle and just start chucking torps. Maybe I'll hit some stuff, maybe not. But really, that's secondary to actually screening torps for your teammates. Again, there's three Shimikazes on the other team. We need to make sure that uh, they don't go around dev striking our uh, battleships. And secondly, we want to get those enemy destroyers off of the board. But it will be another minute or so till we do track one of those destroyers down. And so in the meantime, let's go over our commander build for this uh, match. Again, we're using our good buddy, Felipe Boino. And unfortunately, because this match actually took place uh, from way back in September, I did have to do a little bit of a sleuthing to uh, figure out which uh, skills I picked, because they are different uh, from what I use now. But through some ace detective work, this is probably the build I had. I'm not sure if his skill levels were the same or not, but they're thereabouts. So for this match, we were using uh, mostly a torp boat build. But I think for my second inspiration, I was using Mordoth. I couldn't quite figure out who I was using. But it did appear that my reload time was a bit lower than the stock because double concealment was overkill. And I can't really figure out which other uh, inspirations I might have been using. Maybe Burke, but most likely it would have been worn off to try and uh, up that DPM. But of course now, uh, due to the uh, two kilometer torpedo nerf, we use Gleaves and Torpedo Safari in order to extend our torpedo range back out to uh, 7 kilometers instead of the, uh, the now nerfed 6. But as for this match, you can see that we have the pre nerf 8 kilometer torpedo range. As, uh, there's something that's laid their smokescreen here, but we can still see that Richie Lou, and so we uh, put some torps out uh, towards him. And our twist and track, or I guess it's uh, perceptive on the French boats. Is showing that there's uh, something over here, over in the east, and he had spotted us. Oh, and there he is. We spotted him. Our first tour boat, Shimikaze. Now I'm thinking I want to get this thing off the board as soon as possible because I'm pretty close to that Richie Lou, and there's an Alaska right there too. So I use my main battery reload booster right away because uh, there's no point in saving it if you think you're gonna die. Hell, the faster we get rid of them, the faster we can lose our detectability, which will limit uh, any incoming damage against us. We still got a long match to go here. We didn't want any second guessing. That happens to me a lot, actually. Where I save it, and then I die, and then I go, well, what was the point of saving it? So screw it. Let's use it and get it over with. And so we dispatched that Shimakaze. That got us our first kill of the game. And in the meantime, we got to uh, torp hit on the uh, Richie Lou. And uh, a flood, and the flooding is sticking. We're racking up some good old damage on him. And so let's swing back around and see if we can get uh, another torpedo on him. Maybe uh, get some torps out on this Alaska. Who knows? 
with four torp launchers, uh, we definitely uh, have no shortage of options with this boat. No soon as they say that, and no soon as uh, we launch our torps, the Richelieu takes a big smack from one of our teammates. And uh, it might be a little tough now to uh, get the kill. We'll have to wait and see. In the meantime, we actually uh, venture too close to the damn Richelieu. Either not paying attention or forgetting our detectability range. Also, he was just uh, charging full speed ahead. That uh, is not really something you expect, especially at Tier 7. At least it's uh, not supposed to happen at Tier 7, although it does happen way too often. But I digress. But it didn't matter. Friendly Bismarck Secondaries finished him off. So, heck, we could almost have a 7th kill in this match. Now, we did have some torps out on that Alaska, and I don't know what he was thinking at the end there. And he turns right into our torps. Full broadside to the Bismarck, too. And the Bismarck had smacked him right before our torps finished him off, and that uh, netted us our second kill of the match. So, let's see what's going on in this match. We are up in ships. We have one cap, they have one cap, and we are about to uh, cap the Alpha objective, which will flip it from their teams to our teams, and so we'll be in uh, pretty decent shape. Although we did just lose a ship, so now we're even in ships. So no messing about too much here. Now this is something uh, you don't get an opportunity to do very often, especially with randoms. You can see our Bismarck buddy there. He's not doing so hot. Looks like he's probably less than 2,000 health. The health bar is tiny. And so we thought to ourselves, let's go see if he has will to rebuild and uh, give him a hand there. We might have a need for this guy at the end of the match here. So that's our good deed for the day. You don't get to do that very often, do you? Let's hope it wasn't all for nothing and that he appreciates the help a little bit. I don't know where the heck he's going though or what he's planning. He's kind of going away from the fight. Although he's uh, taking fire, I think, from a frickin' Yamato, so I don't blame him for running away a little bit. But uh, we, I think we did heal him back up a little bit there, and then it looked like he might have popped a repair party. So uh, he's doing pretty good now. Okay, maybe not too good. Looks like he's uh, dealing with a little bit of a fire. But uh, he's been through worse, right? Unfortunately, we don't got any water cannons on board, so we'll let him uh, deal with that on his own. And uh, make our way to the other side of the map and see what's up. Now, their team still has three destroyers left. That's not good. And I want to say there was a Cabrosk over here that had lit that Bismarck of ours on fire. And following our perceptive, we could see that there was something over behind that island. And it turns out it is that Cabrosk after all. Being that our detectability was much better than his, it gave us a split second to, uh, to launch some Hail Mary Torps. And get ready to take a couple of pot shots at him before we uh, lost him behind this big island here. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't find the uh, turret traverse or the rudder shift or the turning circle of the Kalbera to be uh, particularly good. So that is something to keep in mind when you are uh, playing this ship. You do got to plan your turns a little bit. And you can see that even though uh, we had lots of time, we still uh, ran into one of our teammates there a little bit as we were trying to reposition ourselves. We want to stay out of that 6 kilometer torp range of that Cabras, but we still want to uh, engage him. And you know what, we probably got a little bit too close there. If he had torps coming around that corner, we might have gotten ourselves into a little bit of trouble. So I want to ask you guys what you think here. This Cabras has uh, between 3 and 4 health bars left. And uh, throughout this engagement here, we start uh, whittling him down a bit. I think we lit a fire and damage convict. And then in our next salvo, we uh, got two fires on him. And then uh, he keeps taking fire. And I figured here, eventually here, he's gonna die. Like, my fires are gonna get him, or, you know, he's taking fire from all directions. But it looks like his health is uh, increasing. So I'm wondering if he's playing with the health consumable instead of the smoke. I'm pretty sure he is, because otherwise he'd be long dead by now. We don't see too many people playing with that uh, health power-up in the Cabrosk. I know this is a bit of a sidetrack, but I think it's pretty tough to play uh, the Cabrosk in particular without smoke. Um, especially since uh, carriers were introduced. It's a pretty large ship for a destroyer. 
and it's really hard to dodge incoming fire since it's not uh, super maneuverable. You know, it's different when the Cobaric is that you are quick enough to turn around and get out of there and use your speed to disengage. But with the Kavrosk, if you get caught out of position, that's pretty much it for you if you don't have smoke to disengage. Unfortunately, there's this giant island in front of us and we weren't able to uh, get any more shots on that Kavrosk before uh, one of our teammates eventually uh, finished him off. Just one last thought on this Kavros heal. Currently I'm grinding the uh, Kiev, the tier 6 uh, alternative Russian destroyer. And uh, having a heal on a destroyer is pretty handy, so I get why people would uh, use it, maybe at least at that tier. Anyway, speaking of smoke screens, look at what we have here. Our RDF, uh, perceptive, whatever you want to call it, uh, says that uh, there's something in that smoke screen. So we launch some torps towards it. And looky looky, what we found. That's our second destroyer kill, third overall. And if you include that Kavrosk, uh, we had a hand in all three destroyer deaths so far, so that's uh, definitely a winning uh, formula. Like I said in the beginning, you really want to get these freaking destroyers off the board. Not only because of their damage potential, but because of their ability to uh, get in and out of caps uh, undetected. And sitting in your smoke screen as a torpedo boat is definitely not uh, something that's advisable because you are accomplishing jack shit. Maybe if you're a gunboat, you can use it uh, you know, to farm damage a little bit. I don't know, it's a, not really my playstyle, but you know, to harass battleships as they say. But if you're a shimikaze, your smoke screen should be used for nothing but disengaging. So anyways, the match is pretty even at this point. The only advantage that we have is that uh, we have two caps compared to their one. Now coming up on uh, Yamato here, Waited uh, a little bit longer than uh, we normally would have. Showed some pretty good patience, actually, to uh, make sure that he wasn't going to turn after we launched our torps. And once we got close enough, we knew that a widespread would uh, be fine because, uh, let's face it, the Yamato's huge and it's hard to dodge torps anyways. And since our Kobera torps uh, hit like a truck, we only really needed one to hit him. And there you go, our fourth kill of the match. Now we're doing some multitasking there, too. We were paying attention to our RDF because it wasn't pointing at the Yamato, it was pointing at something else behind this island. And since we could uh, see the Marnark behind the Yamato, that means that that last destroyer is over here somewhere. We had to slow it down a bit because uh, two Torp salvos uh, crossed our path. And we continued uh, following our RDF. And there we go, I popped the Shimikaze, final destroyer on the enemy team. And uh, because we only saw two Torp launchers, we did hit the brakes. Because you know that there's a third torque launcher coming. That sucker's got three of the damn things. Oh boy, one of those salvos there was over 4k in damage. Yikes, this thing hits like a truck. That Shimakaze has stood no chance. And there you go, our Kraken Unleashed medal. Fifth kill of the match. Over 100,000 in damage. We even got a Confederate medal out of that engagement. Now with only one ship left on the enemy team, it's basically just a matter of wrapping up this match. So what do you guys think about the Colbert overall? Did you think it was uh, too powerful of a ship before the nerf? Do you think it's been neutered a bit too much? Or is it a ship that's just never interested to you? I used to love it. It was kind of my uh, new go-to legendary when it was released. It had amazing torps, and uh, you saw by my second inspiration, specking into the guns, whether it was Mordoff or perhaps Burke, whoever it was, you know, I had built upon the Boino's base trait of increased HE damage. And that made it a really formidable knife fighter, too. But now you kind of have to play it quite differently. Again, if you haven't checked out my uh, post-nerf Clubera Kraken video, check that out. And I'll walk you through everything with regards to the commander setup, and inspirations, and skill choices, and all that good stuff. In order to make the Clubera as effective as possible these days. Well, that's for this match. I guess that Monarch just kind of gave up. He figured that he was going to lose anyway, so he sailed out onto the open and let us get our six pack. That's right, our six kill of the match. Nice little cherry on top of the uh, cake, on top of the whipped cream, on top of the fudge, and all that good stuff that you find on a delicious six kill cake. Thinking that Monarch also netted us the high caliber medal too. So what's that? It's like a scoop of chocolate chip mint ice cream beside our cake. Man, so now I'm hungry, so let's wrap this up, huh?
So here we are at the end screen. We have ourselves the Confederate Medal, Kraken Unleashed Medal, High Caliber Medal, over 119,000 damage. And all that was only on six torpedo hits, too. That's actually impressive. So we used our guns quite a bit in that game, too. Very good showcasing of uh, what the Kubera can do. Well, I do hope you really enjoyed that video. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button. If you want to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. Feel free to leave a comment down below. And as always, take care of yourself and do what makes you happy.